Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and co-parents of all ages, this podcast is for you. Introducing in the center ring, the amicable divorce expert, Judith Weigel. Welcome back. In our celebrity divorce series today, we're going to do a little celebrity divorce roundup because a couple aspects of different celebrity divorces that we covered in the past came up in my own office with my regular non-celebrity clients. And I thought this would be an important time to kind of group some things together all about money that I know many of you are running into today or did recently. So we are going to cover four different things. We're going to cover how attorneys charge you. We're going to cover playing the spousal and child support game. We're also going to discuss prenups and postnups and then social media. So let's start with the attorneys. Now, this is not a blanket statement about every single attorney because I have a list of phenomenal attorneys who would never, ever, ever treat their clients like dollar signs. Unfortunately, that's not all of the attorneys. And I do realize that in every profession, you have wonderful people at the top that will treat you with respect, that will try and give you the best service and not soak you for every dollar that you have. And then there are a lot in the middle that kind of go back and forth. And then you have that bottom rung that unfortunately, paves the way for the distrust people have with attorneys. With celebrities, they are major dollar signs. An attorney sees a celebrity coming, and if the career is going well, there's a lot of money to be made. There are attorneys in Los Angeles that that charge $1,000 an hour. Can you imagine? They charge $1,000 an hour. Others charge seven fifty. The going rate in Los Angeles is four twenty five an hour. Why do attorneys see dollar signs? Well, I was having lunch with an attorney the other day who said, "But we're taught that in law school. We are taught that if we work for a major firm, we'll we will be asked to create work just so we can get a minimum of billable hours in." We will be asked to create work just so we can have profit. We will be asked to create work so that we can extend the life of the case. This is so repulsive to me, to extend the life of a case beyond where it has to go. We're talking about family law. We're talking about people's personal lives. We're talking about people's relationship to their children, to each other, to co-parenting. How can you do that? It's like going to a doctor that doesn't, that, that can diagnose you properly, simply doesn't just to make more money from you. Okay. Yes, we know that happens too. This is, we have a crisis of morality and ethics um, in society. I want to tell you a story that happened to me. I belong to a few bar associations. And in one of the bar associations a few years ago, I was sitting at an evening seminar on family law. And you're at these little tables of eight. So you're two inches away from one another, mostly attorneys. And then there's me, the mediator and the legal document preparation company. Maybe there'll be a therapist, a forensic accountant, But for the most part, they are attorneys. And you get to know people just because you're sitting right next to them. I was listening to two attorneys talk to one another. They didn't work together, but they apparently knew each other well enough for this conversation to take place. One attorney says to the other attorney, hey, I got this great new case in today. And the other attorney is shaking his head. The attorney speaking said, Um, I represent the wife, opposing counsel represents the husband. And the way it was spoken, it sounded like husband was going to be paying the legal bills. It sounded like there's a lot of money in this case because here's what came next. 
attorney who got the new fabulous case in her office said, and I just got a call from opposing counsel today who said, get ready. We're going to pay for you to death. Do you know what that means? That means we're going to create reasons to make filings just to make money for us and just to cause your client pain, attorney who's representing the wife, because I guess apparently opposing counsel representing husband, I don't know what there is to win. It's a community property state. It is what it is. If you follow the law, it is what it is. Okay. Nothing more was said. So I was intrigued by this conversation and I said, listen, I'm, I'm so sorry to mean to eavesdrop, but we are sitting two inches from each other. I was fascinated by your conversation. What did you say to opposing counsel when he said, we're going to paper you to death? And she stared at me and she said, what do you mean? I said, well, what did you say? You had to have said something, right? <clears throat> you didn't just end the conversation and hang up. And she said, she just stared at me and said, I, I, what, do you, what do you mean? And I said, okay, you could have said any one of things, any number of things like that's completely unethical. We can't just create work and charge money for no reason. I cannot, even though your client is paying my legal fees, I can't on purpose create pain for my own client. That would be totally unethical. I can't join you in putting frivolous filings inside the courthouse so that they take time on cases that don't need to be addressed, making other people who need the court suffer and wait in line. And that would go against the attorney code of ethics. Any one of these things at all? And she just stared. And so I said to her, I said, look, I'm not an attorney. I'm a mediator in a legal document preparation company. And this is why I have a job, because of this game playing going on behind the scenes. This is why I have a job. This is why this level of service was created. Okay, so that's completely appalling. There's another celebrity that I know of uh, that had an agreement already made ready to roll, hired attorneys because celebrities, you know, you want the language to be perfect. You want all the I's dotted, T's crossed. So even though you're amicable, even though you've created your settlement, you want to have attorneys write it up. I completely understand that. And depending on the kind of celebrity you are, you may have a lot of things that other people don't have, like different types of intellectual property, films, music, plays. I mean, there's so many different things that come into a celebrity's life that don't come into our lives, although we can own a lot of property, rental property, Airbnbs, we can own airplanes. I mean, we non-celebrities can have huge estates, no doubt. But I think we become walking dollar signs. <clears throat> I believe this celebrity was told something completely erroneous, like you're not allowed to talk to one another. Can you imagine? Can you imagine telling somebody they can't talk to one another? Can you imagine that? Amicable divorce. Families, you're going to see one another going forward. There are going to be family events. You want it to be amicable. How dare you treat people like this? And, and what if there were minor children? Are you going to have your attorneys talk to the children, do the children's homework, uh, schedule pickups back and forth? Does that make sense at all? What a horrible, horrible lie to tell somebody. Horrible. Just to make more money. Billable hours. The attorneys that charge $1,000 an hour in Los Angeles, there's no different paperwork that they do than any other attorney does at $425 an hour. The paperwork's the same. The process is the same. 
There's nothing different. Okay, maybe you'll hire a private judge and not go to court, but 80, 85% of our cases in California don't hit the courthouse anyway. You don't go to hearings, you don't go to trials. It's all negotiated out of court and filed with settlement agreements. I haven't heard of any of these $1,000 an hour attorneys being any more successful than an attorney that charges $425 an hour. So why do the celebrities do it? Because they're celebrities. You know, it's just a weird way of thinking. I do understand that you can pay more for products that are better made than other products. So of course, if you have the money, if you have the disposable income, if you're able to live really well, yes, of course, you're going to spend more money on things. People fly private instead of going to the airport and flying commercial. I would so fly private in a second. I would use whatever money I had just not to have to go through airport craziness, wouldn't you? Yes. But to pay $1,000 an hour, I remember Kim Kardashian, no, Khloe Kardashian, when she was, uh, when she was divorcing Lamar Odom, she hired Laura Wasser. Now, Laura Wasser is well known, very well respected, phenomenal entrepreneur, runs a great law firm, and her dad preceded her. He was seriously well-respected in town. So you go, Laura, you go. But I remember Khloe Kardashian's divorce, and I remember Laura having a photo in the LA Times or online, and she was standing holding the case profile for Khloe and Lamar. And we were able to zoom in and get, get the case number. And so we clicked on the case number. So I don't know if it's this way in every state, but in California, if you have the case number, you can go to a public website that anybody can go to and click in the case number. And you can't see what's written on the forms, but you can see what was filed. And it was the simplest divorce known to mankind, the least amount of paperwork able to be filed thousand dollars an hour. I just thought that was interesting. Well, Laura Wasser is the Kardashian family divorce attorney. So she gets a lot of business. And and like like I said, you go, Laura, you go. No issues with Laura. I'm just saying a good attorney is a good attorney is a good attorney. And they all fall in the same pocket in the four hundred dollar an hour range, maybe five hundred. And you'll get the job done. They argue cases extremely well because I know some of these people and they're good people and they wouldn't spend your money unnecessarily. These people are in charge of their own firms and they do not overbill people. In fact, they don't take business in that can be done by somebody like me. Less money. This is how cool some attorneys are. Please look for the cool ones. Number two, don't play the support game. Don't play the child and spousal support game. Okay, three celebrities, Mary J. Blige, Adele, Kelly Clarkson. This has come up in my office a couple times this week, and it's come up in the past, and it comes up in everybody's office. You have children, and you are in line to pay spousal support. And the person paying somehow says, You know, I was thinking of cutting back on work. I'm really tired. And so I think, why don't you wait until I'm making less money in a couple months, and then you can run the DISO master, that's the calculator, in the state of California for child and spousal support, definitely for child support. Uh, And then we can see what the real number is. And I say, no, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Do you think any judge would not be shocked at your idea to cut back on work just so you don't have to pay child and spousal, as much child and spousal support. Completely, utterly nuts. Number one, 
people are fearful regarding spousal support. They really are fear, fearful. And most people, men or women, whoever the higher wage earner is, don't like being connected to their spouse after the divorce is final through spousal support. And I really and truly get that. I think as does any divorce professional, we all get that. So in California, and please check the laws in your state, in California, the most uh, revenue on a yearly basis, i.e. monthly basis, that can be used to calculate spousal support is the most that person made in the marriage. And why is that? Because the standard of living is based on the highest amount that was made during the marriage. That was the highest standard of living. Unless you've been married 20 years and your living has just dwindled down and down and down and you're never going to reach the highest standard of living. But this is how it's come up a couple times with spousal support. And that is... I'm ready to get a raise or I have another job offer and it's so much more money and I really want to take it, but I'm really afraid to take it because then that will make my spousal support obligation slash alimony higher. Well, in the state of California, as I said, the most money that the payor made between date of marriage and date of separation is the ceiling. So there is a ceiling spousal support only. <clears throat> and even if there wasn't, I'm just going to say this, even if there wasn't, please make money. Don't not make money. Don't make that the motivation for not making money. Keep advancing in your life. Now, it's different with child support. There is no ceiling in the state of California with child support. Again, Check the laws in your state, contact attorneys and find out. So child support in California is modifiable based on the changing incomes of both parents and possibly the uh, modification in the co-parenting schedule. But I found this interesting in child and spousal support with these three celebrities. Let's look at Mary J. Blige for a second. So this was brought to my attention when Mary J. Blige was in the Super Bowl halftime show. And we did a Super Bowl. Uh, we did a show on all the artists in the halftime show that had uh, divorce issues or child support issues. And Mary J. Blige, although she is divorced, had to go on tour in order to meet her spousal support obligations to her ex-husband, who I understand used to be her manager. So she's now at the Super Bowl halftime show and she's going on tour just to pay her spousal support obligations. I don't think Mary J got divorced in California. I think she got divorced in another state. I'm pretty sure she did. I don't know how the spouse, how the settlement agreement was written. Maybe it was written that it wasn't modifiable. Perhaps if it was uh, written that it was not modifiable, then I guess she had to keep going to work unless she could petition for a change in circumstances. So there can be a change in circumstances for people. Um, after the divorce is final, and if it's serious enough, if it's long lasting enough, uh, you can see if the court will change it. It's called a request for order in the state of California. You're requesting of the court to make a different order than was written in the settlement agreement. So it just remains to be seen. But that's what Mary J was doing and starting with the Super Bowl halftime show. Let's go to Kelly Clarkson because her divorce was recently in the news and um, about a month or two ago, I did a, a show on Kelly Clarkson. Well, I think Kelly had a prenup and we're going to talk about that second, but it doesn't sound like it covered everything because she has two children. Child support was definitely part of the mix, as was spousal support, at least for a while. And it was huge, child and spousal support. It was really huge. But then again, look at Kelly. She's got the TV show. She's doing commercials. She has the recording career. 
I believe her husband was also a manager, possibly her manager or agent. But there had to have been some kind of prenup because there was a ranch that was of issue in her divorce and it was considered separate property. But her former husband wanted to be a rancher and petitioned for the property because it would add to his income. I thought that was hysterical. It would add to the career change. Kelly got the ranch. But Kelly is paying a substantial amount of money in child and spousal support. And that girl hasn't stopped working. That girl is not the person who says, you know what, I think I need to cut back. No, she keeps charging on. And that's what I'm saying. Do not inhibit and prohibit your life from moving forward financially just because you want to pay less child and spousal support. It's so not worth it. When you're you're looking at child support especially, you can't look at the money going to the other parent. And I know that's what is at the bottom of this. I don't want him or her to have this money because I don't know what they're going to do with it. Well, they're going to pay for the child with it. They're going to get nail appointments anyway, get their hair cut. They're going to do personal things. But child support is to pay for food, shelter, and clothing for your child. Well, as long as your child is living in a house with the other parent, eating food in that house, and needing to be clothed, That money is going to go to that child. Now, depending on the income of the payor, I don't know, maybe you could negotiate something a little less than the calculator says. Everything is negotiable, but when push comes to shove, we have our laws. But Kelly is a great example of she just keeps moving forward. Okay. So this is the amount of money. Child support won't be forever, nor will spousal support. She wasn't married forever. And then lastly, the third celebrity I wanted to highlight in the child and spousal support category is Adele. You know, Adele has two children with her former husband, and it didn't really sound like there was a huge issue, but Adele keeps working. So I believe Adele's former husband was her manager as well. He made money from her professionally, and then he lived well with her personally. But when I was reviewing Adele, and and I did a whole um, episode on her, once she did the concert at the Greek, um, not the Greek theater, the uh, Griffiths Observatory, which is just above the Greek theater in Los Angeles, beautiful. Beautiful location. It didn't really sound like there were big issues like that. At least it didn't hit the paper. So it sounds like they were pretty amicable in what they worked out. But do not play the support game. Do not limit your income just to limit the amount of money you can, you have to provide. And if you feel that you need to If you're on the receiving end of this, if you feel that you need to accept less just to get the divorce done, you know you can always go back and, as I said, petition the court and uh, revise, especially if it was way too low, if it went well under the laws of your state. You know, you can always go back to court in most states, I would think. Number three. Prenups and postnups. Oh my God, they're so uncomfortable. I know they're necessary, but they're so uncomfortable. So let's look at Kelly Clarkson. Let's, you know, segue from her into that. There was some type of prenup, something. It just didn't sound like it was as airtight because there was at least temporary spousal support and it was huge. Temporary spousal support was more than some people make in a year incredible. This girl works. Her talk show is so much fun. Has Have you all wa- watched it? It comes on early in the morning in Los Angeles, like at 5 a.m., 4 a.m. She's adorable. She really is. What a great talk show host. 
I'm a sucker for talk shows. But Kelly apparently had something, but not airtight. Unlike Candy Burris, Candy Burris from the Atlanta Housewives on Bravo and Candy Burris from all those cool songs she wrote for Whitney Houston, um, Destiny's Child and TLC. I mean, she wrote big ass hits for these people. So when she was going to marry Todd, who she met as a cameraman, who was assigned to the Atlanta Housewives uh, for Bravo when they were in Africa, you know, fell in love, got married. Well, Candy had all of her intellectual property, all the songs that she had written that she was collecting royalties on. She had her studio where she was producing other artists. I mean, Candy is a serial entrepreneur. Candy definitely wanted to pray. Now, Candy is about money. Candy loves money. She talks about money constantly. Well, okay, you're good at making money, Candy, and that's that's good. That's really good. But the way it was presented was so repulsive on the show. It was incredibly unloving. And here's what I say to people coming in for prenups. I can't write up a prenup, by the way. Only attorneys should write prenups because the the legal bells and whistles have to be so tight to make a prenup be able to stand up in court if challenged that you can't have somebody like me write it. As good as I am, don't come to me. Come to me to mediate because I do have something interesting that I put in the mediation that I don't think many people do. And I'm going to share that with you in a second. But you really need attorneys to write them. And each of you needs an attorney on your side to make sure that the language is right for you, that the deal is right for you, that it's written correctly. And you have to have a certain amount of time in front uh, before the wedding day so it doesn't look like anybody's under duress and signing this. And it should be videotaped. Like all these precautions need to be taken. Okay, here's why it was so repulsive. It was all about money. And this is what I put into my mediations for prenups. Okay, I understand, you understand, everybody's in agreement that what was earned before the marriage, you keep. But what are you going to do about creating community property? What are you doing about this? Because marriage is a financial contract. That's why you go to a courthouse to get a marriage license because it's a financial contract you're creating. You are earning money. You're buying things. You're creating a lifestyle. Well, aren't you going to create some community property? Don't you want to create an estate together? And if you're going to have children, something you can both equally leave to your children. I remember, and I mean, obviously, I don't know if this is for the show or not, but this is what was presented on the show. So, of course, I take it as Bible. Um, They were moving into a new house. And if there was a divorce that was going to be imminent, Todd and Candy, Todd had to leave the house immediately. Immediately. And it didn't address what would be community property. So they're both earning a living. Candy earns more, but they both earn a living. Todd earns enough money to, to, to have a nice life if Candy didn't exist. So Candy, I mean, it, you're going into joint vesh, ventures with Todd, assuming some of these restaurants are going to be community property that you're, that you're putting together that he's working in and, and, and some of these shows that you created. So when people come into my office for prenups, I say, let's identify not only what is going to remain separate, but what you're going to create that will be community. And it throws everybody off because all they're thinking of is what's going to become separate. Nobody's really thinking about, well, are we going to buy a house together? Are we going to grow a business together? Are we going to leave these options open? Timeshares? What are we going to do? So that's something to think about in the prenup situation. Postnups. 
Postnups are weirder than prenups to me. And this may just be me, but it sounds like, well, we didn't have enough time to do a prenup, so we'll do a postnup. Or we didn't want to do a prenup, but then people kept coming to us and convincing us we should, or we got scared. Postnups are prenups, but after the fact. An, uh, an agreement about what is separate and what is not after you've gotten married. And I know somebody who called me who was having problems in the marriage and was considering divorce. One person was wealthy. The other person wasn't. The person who was wealthy was older. The person who wasn't was younger. So it was uh, an older person, younger person attraction, but they never did a prenup. They met online, kiss of death. We had a, uh, with Barry Mosian, uh, a couple weeks ago, we had an episode on how to avoid uh, fraudulent relationships, relationships based on how much money do you have that you can give me? And certainly at the divorce, um, they did a postnup. They didn't do a prenup because they met online and within three weeks they were married. Crazy, 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 especially in this day and age. Those, those online dating services, especially when you have international dating services, they are just, they're predatory environments. They are set up to take advantage of you. You have to be really, really careful of these types of international dating sites. So they did a postnup. And I thought that was interesting that they did a postnup though, because it kind of showed that maybe there was some real love. Maybe it wasn't as surface as it seemed. Hey, you look great. Let's get married. That's what it sounded like, but that made me feel really good, actually, when I heard that they got a postnup, and I just heard about this recently. So if you couldn't get the prenup, if things were too crazy before the wedding, or if you really thought about it more, a postnup is there, but then again, how do you go to the other person? This is what interests me. How do you go to the other person and say, well, we didn't have time to do a prenup or I didn't think about it or I've changed my mind. I would like to address some things that I would like to keep separate that I had well before we met. And so let's do a post, a postnup. Well, that's when you know you love somebody when you agree to a postnup, don't you think? I think so. And then there's somebody like him and Kanye. Well, you know dang well there were prenups <laughs> because Chris wasn't going to let this happen, but they had their own money. So, you know, it's really cool when two people who are very well established and maybe they didn't make the exact same amount of money, but they made so much money individually that, of course, they want to keep all their stuff separate. And the kids, you know, it's all about the kids, all about giving the best life to the kids. And I bet both people want to contribute heavily to the children. So um, yes, I'm sure they had a prenup airtight without a doubt, uh, but I bet they're generously dealing with their children. Lastly, social media. Since I just said Kim and Kanye, I'm going to segue into social media through Kanye West, because we did talk about this with attorney Lamore Mojdahiyazad. She was the one that did the Super Bowl halftime show rappers divorce episode. And she really talked about social media. Don't use it. Do not use it while you're going through divorce. Do not blather everything going on in your life on social media. It could totally come back to haunt you. It really, really could. Adele wasn't, I mean, Adele did interviews about, certainly with Oprah. I mean, there's the biggest mouthpiece known to mankind. But she didn't do dirty laundry. That was just really cool. She talked about her process. She didn't. Uh, criticize her ex. She really talked about her own personal journey. Con, I mean, Kanye, on the other hand, oh my God, everybody he was dating out there on social media, um, disparaging uh, Pete Davis, Davidson, 
it, it, it just doesn't make you look good. It makes you look mean and horrible. Divorce is private. Yes, you're a celebrity. Okay, there's going to be press releases. Look at Gwyneth Paltrow. You know, she's the one that introduced the conscious uncoupling concept, um, Catherine Woodward Thomas's concept. And you didn't hear any dirty laundry about Chris and Gwyneth, did you? No, not at all. They were very cool about how they went through their divorce. They didn't use social media to disparage at all. They used it actually to show people that there was a better way. And that started a whole movement. And I thought that was so cool of Gwyneth to do that. Now, I don't know if she read Catherine's book. Legend says she didn't. Legend tells me that she saw the book laying in her doctor's office, the pediatrician's office, told the pediatrician. I think legend says that Catherine Woodward Thomas had her office on that floor. The book was in the pediatrician's office. The pediatrician wanted to promote healthy, amicable divorce as well. And even if, even if Gwyneth didn't know Catherine, I think that was super cool of Gwyneth to start the movement of really pushing for amicable divorces. And then there is an attorney named Tracy out of Atlanta that has started the Amicable Divorce Network, the Amicable Divorce Network. And it was to promote a list of amicable attorneys who will never take your money needlessly, that will only allow you to spend money as it needs to be spent, will not drag out your divorce or will let you go on pause if you emotionally need to, which is very important. Sometimes the stress of the divorce, the stress of the uncoupling, the stress of co-parenting, uh, maybe the kids are going through a tough time. Sometimes you simply need to put a pause on the divorce process. Really and truly bear this in mind. It's it's something you should do just to relax, just to get yourself healthy. Maybe some sessions with a therapist so that you can refocus because these decisions that you're making are super important. So you do have to go on pause. But back to social media. So when Lamar Mojdahiazad and I were talking about Kanye West and how he was going nuts on social media, um, Matthew Smurda, an attorney I've had on in the past on these celebrity divorce interviews. I love Matthew. I love Lamar. These are really wholesome, great human beings. Matthew was saying he was actually in a courtroom one day with a client and the ex was sitting behind him posting on social media. They literally could see it from where they were sitting. And it was when it was their time to speak in front of the judge nailed them, used the post that just went out on social media uh, to the detriment of that person right then and there in the courtroom. I thought that was so exciting. Get off social media. Nobody wants to hear it unless it's something positive. If you want to post positive, great. And this is the only thing I said when I was talking about um, adding significant others into your life while you're still getting divorced. And it was about Kim and, and, uh, Pete Davidson. I said, you know, more power to you, Kim, if you met somebody that is making you feel good. But you know, Kanye, why would you throw that in his face? Why would you do that? You have enough money that your skims line and anything else you're, you're making, it's going to be fine without putting Pete Davidson everywhere. It's going to be fine. You're going to make money. You know, there are just some times when even though you've made your living in your brilliant marketing on social media, you don't have to do everything. I mean, Bethany Frankel allowed cameras to shoot her going to the bathroom while she was pregnant. I mean, come on. And I dig Bethany, by the way. I'm a big Bethany Frankel fan. I really, really am. And especially uh, using social media for her philanthropic efforts when people are devastated, Puerto Rico, Houston. God, I love her for this. 
I really love her for that, using her money and influence to help people. There are some things we do not need to know, and we do not need to see you going to the bathroom. We do not need Kim to know what you're doing with Pete Davidson every single second. And Kanye, spare us the details of the rants because you make good music, you make good clothing, focus your energy and be a good dad. Be a good dad. Well, I think that's all I have to say in our celebrity divorce roundup today. I hope you've learned something from this. I appreciate the time that you've taken to be here and join me. Please let me know if there are topics you would like to bring me bring up, um, questions you'd like to have answered. And you can reach me through my website, theamicabledivorceexpert.com. Judith, oh, the the theamicabledivorceexpert.com, or you can email me at judith at theamicabledivorceexpert.com. And as always, have an amicable day. That's our show for today. Thank you for joining us. Be good to yourselves, be kind to your spouse, and cherish your children above all else. 